Want to go? Okay. Uh, thank you for your attendance this afternoon. Uh, Assistant Commissioner Mike Condon, State Crime Operations Command. Detective Inspector Gary Watts, the officer in charge of Task Force Hydra. Queensland Police Service has today filed an application in the Supreme Court under the Criminal Organisation Act 2009 to make a declaration that the Gold Coast Finks Motorcycle Club is a criminal organisation. This legislation seeks to disrupt and dismantle the activities of criminal organisations involved in criminal activities and who present an unacceptable risk to the community of Queensland. The Queensland Police Service remains committed to utilising whatever resources are necessary to ensure that these individuals and groups are identified and that they are brought to task in relation to their criminal activity. This application is the result of extensive work by members of Task Force Hydra and other police officers throughout the state of Queensland over the past three years. The application is a comprehensive and lengthy process and requires significant resources to remeet the requirements and threshold of the legislation. The application is part of a wider law enforcement strategy to identify criminal organisations committing serious criminal activity that, as I said, enhances the safety of Queensland. The application today should serve as a clear message to outlaw motorcycle gangs and other criminal organisations who are committing serious criminal activity and placing the community at risk that we will not hesitate to use the powers of this legislation to bring these people to account. Happy to take questions. Do the powers as they stand apply to the, just to the public as a whole, or do they automatically apply to all members of this chapter? This There's two stages. The first stage is to uh, make application to declare the uh, particular group a criminal organisation. After that point, uh, there is a further process where individuals within the organisation who we identify as being a serious risk to the community are then identified where we make application for what is called a order. So it's done as individuals, not as all members of the club? That's correct. So what will it mean for people who are currently in the group? It, it could mean that uh, should the courts support our application, that first of all the Fink's Gold Coast chapter will be declared a criminal organisation and secondly individuals and possibly past members associated with the club or involved in the club could have uh, orders placed against them. Is it, what's, what's the ultimate aim? Is it to bust up the, the club and just move them away from, from Queensland? The ultimate aim is to uh, disrupt and dismantle individuals within the criminal organisation who uh, conduct themselves in a criminal, uh, yeah, con conducting themselves in criminal activities that place a risk to the community. So out of Queensland. Well, there's no real uh, provision, as I understand, as to where they go. The uh, orders, should they be executed, will provide certain requirements under the Act in relation to what they can and can't do. What sort of things? Prevention of association, shutting down clubhouses? Okay. Uh, in relation to that point, uh, the, the conditions can be attached to the control orders include prohibiting controlled persons associating with other members of the uh, organisation, prohibiting those members from possessing weapons, recruiting members to join the organisation, applying for specific employment such as security, being granted access to stated premises such as clubhouse or premises within the community. If a person breaches these control orders, they could face up to five years imprisonment. So basically anything that they do in their normal daily going around now will, will become illegal? Going to their clubhouse, meeting their mates, and trying to recruit new members? That's correct. What, what you said previously about past members, so will this be applied retrospectively? 
The Act is designed to address the current and past member activity. So people who have previously been affiliated could be under, if this goes through the Supreme Court and is approved, it could go back and get them the things that they've already done? If the courts decide that that's uh, the extent of the orders, that's correct. How long do you think it will be before you get the power structure, the second stage, you know, to, to start moving on this? Well, that's unknown. The matter was filed today. Uh, we're really now uh, waiting on the uh, actions of uh, the defence who uh, may engage the, uh, the Fink's Gold Coast chapter. Why have you singled out the Fink's um, as opposed to other groups? Okay. As you'd be aware, the legislation is designed to look at uh, criminal organisations involved in serious criminal activity that pose a risk to the community. It was our view uh, that the uh, Fink's Gold Coast chapter pose a great risk to the community, supported by the criminal activity that, that members of that group have been involved in over many years, such as offences of murder, extortion, robbery, burglary, stalking, deprivation of liberty, drug trafficking, unlawful use of motor vehicles, possession of firearms, and intimidation and standover tactics. Clearly these are offences and activities that the community uh, will not stand for and in our view they pose a great risk to the community. Have you got any other um, gangs in sight? Have you, are you working on the, the whole process with any other gangs? I'm not able to make comment on that particular Has question. Has it been too lengthy, the process? Is the legislation too difficult to... You said it's been taken about three years. Uh, no, we don't believe so. There's been an extensive investigation. Uh, being the first application, it was important that we reach the threshold of the legislation, which, um, uh, what you must remember, we, we're going to the Supreme Court, and it's important that uh, we gather all possible, credible, reliable and admissible evidence to support the application. You said that this should serve as a warning to other gangs. The length of time that it's taken to prepare this application, do you think that would lessen the warning to them considering anything would take years to, to get up. Sorry, what was your question again? So you've said um, down the bottom of this press release that this should be seen as a warning. It's taken two, two years to um, get it before the Supreme Court. How is that a warning to other gangs if it, it, will, if it will take years for similar action against them? Well, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, criminal organisations have been sitting back wondering what's going to happen in relation to this legislation. We have now taken action and if they've got any brains, they'll be meeting and deciding that they need to start acting within accordance of what uh, community standards require and stop committing offences. If they don't, they will be subject to an application. Make no mistake. Now you've got this one under your belt, is any following ones likely to be easier for you because you know where you're going, what you're doing? Well, certainly, we've, um, the members of the Declaration of Control Unit within Task Force Hydra have been working very hard since the enactment of this legislation. Um, we've got the first application ready and was lodged today. Um, it was new legislation. We've gained experience in using that legislation. And certainly, the next, uh, the next application we make, um, we believe it will be in a shorter time period. Have you started making, sorry. Yeah. Oh, have you started making any other applications? Um, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question at this stage. Would you reserve the option to make a sec second application if the first application becomes subject to a High Court challenge? Oh, that's a matter we'll have to look at operationally. Yeah, are you confident that you'll avoid the sort of legal problems they had in South Australia with, with their fighting laws there? Uh, the legal advice that we'd be given is that our um, Act is quite strong. It has different thresholds within different jurisdictions. We are confident uh, that we have presented a strong case based on the legislative framework that we've been given to operate under. It's now a matter for the court to decide as to whether that we've achieved that threshold. Question to Gary. Gary, you, you and your task force have been dealing with these blokes for, for, for a long time now. How significant a step is this uh, for you and your men today? I think it's a significant step. It's, it's given us another tool. Uh, in our tool, uh, in our toolkit, to uh, to disrupt and dismantle criminal elements, criminal criminal elements within outlaw motorcycle gangs. The mantra from clubs ad nauseum has been that it's individuals committing crime, not the club. Um, generally, um, what are the ways that the application shows the club is instrumental in enabling criminal activity? Uh, 
I think that's a matter for the uh, courts to decide. We've put a strong case forward. Uh, you will be able to access uh, that sort of material and form your own views uh, sometime next week when the uh, courts make it available. Campbell Newman said only a, a few weeks ago that if you start banning motorcycle clubs, you could then start banning uh, Bronco supporters for being you know, uh, members of, of the Broncos club. What do you say to that? Uh, simply this, uh, I've been given a piece of legislation to carry out investigations. We have done that. We presented a, court, a case to the uh, courts today. Uh, those comments, if they were made, and I didn't hear them, are, are a matter for other people. Mike, isn't it the case, though, that the evidence that you have, the defence won't get to see under this legislation? Uh, well, there are two phases to it. There is the criminal intelligence um, information, uh, which has a... Um, a framework of confidentiality, and then there's the criminal organisation application which we forwarded today, uh, which um, uh, the defence and uh, members of the Finks will be able to access. But you would agree, though, that the bulk of the evidence is <coughs> they won't ever get to see? Sorry, what was the question again? You would agree, though, that the bulk of the evidence that you have, their defence won't get to see? Uh, no, I don't agree with the word bulk at all. Uh, there is a criminal intelligence application that has been before the courts. Uh, that has a framework of confidentiality surrounding it, and uh, the uh, judge will view that uh, uh, information and make his or her own determination based on the entirety of the information before the court. If, if your applications are successful, what's to stop the members of the, this club just going underground or, or just giving themselves a new name and just continuing on with what they're doing? Well, the legislation is designed and the Queensland Police Service with uh, Task Force Hydra are well experienced in dealing with any amount of criminality, whether they go underground or not. All of those things that you accused um, the members of the Finks Club of doing, um, murder, uh, all those weapons offences, they're all things that you could get them for under existing laws. Why is it important to use this one? Well, I didn't accuse them. These are matters of public record. These persons have committed these offences and been sentenced or, or given uh, fines. So um, these are facts. Uh, in relation to your question, uh, there are laws uh, within this state, in particular the Criminal Code of Queensland, that allows us to identify persons and bring them before the court to have them dealt with for serious crimes. This uh, legislation is unique in that it identifies criminal organisations committing serious and indictable offences or serious offences that impact on the safety of Queensland. It's a little bit different to the standard legislation we deal with. The act, this act and the process that you're going through, does it give you any special powers um, in relation to their clubhouses and how you... Uh, you I thought there was some talk about them being banned from using cameras and security systems in their, their clubhouses. Uh, there are provisions under the act with respect to fortification rules. Uh, that's as much as I can comment in relation to that question. What's the significance of um, Pompana proprietary member being included as a respondent in the application? Uh, this part of the uh, legal process that we need to satisfy uh, during the uh, application, uh, these are matters that will be determined by the court. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much.